The Supreme Court has just ruled that it will not hear an appeal on a case involving retired clinical psychologist Jordan Peterson. Peterson has been vocal on social media, speaking his mind on social and political issues unrelated to psychology. The college ordered him to undergo social media training or potentially lose his license, and he refused. CBC's Janice McGregor is in Ottawa, and she joins us now live with more. Janice, tell us more about what this case is about and what led to it going all the way to the Supreme Court. I mean, Jordan Peterson is... Uh, um, for many people, a huge celebrity and, and certainly a very polarizing figure. Yeah, a very big deal in certain online circles, as you say. He no longer sees patients as a clinical psychologist. He is Professor Emeritus at U of T, but nowadays his lectures very much happen in the online space. He has a Peterson Academy where he sells courses. He has an education podcast, best-selling book, The 12 Rules of, of Life, uh, very popular among those who like to hear his views, which often rail against what he sees as woke liberalism. Um, he's amassed a huge following uh, with his YouTube channel and so on, uh, espousing these views. And it was some of his media posts that uh, triggered complaints to the college uh, for uh, psychi uh, psychologists, rather, the governing body for Ontario psychologists, uh, a licensing body of which he was a member, uh, LGBT groups, for example. Uh, finding that some of the derogatory speech he made uh, was offensive and hateful and fearing that it could create the impression that uh, if the college endorsed this from one of its professionals, that healthcare services provided by members of the college weren't necessarily a safe space for members of these vulnerable uh, groups. The college sided with these complainants, uh, agreed that these statements were a form of professional misconduct. They ordered Peterson to take a, a teaching, a coaching course in terms of what is appropriate uh, in terms of uh, public statements uh, from a professional, or he would risk losing his license and his, his membership, saying that because he markets himself as a psychologist in the public space, he was not speaking merely as an individual, and he can't have it both ways. If you're a member of a regulated profession, there are uh, some constrictions, some guardrails on, on what you can do, lest your public statements cause harm. Uh, Peterson, of course, disagrees with that. He says he wasn't speaking in a professional capacity when he made the posts in question. He should be entitled off-duty uh, to hold those views and, and express them, and that's why he took them to court. But both the lower court and the Ontario Court of Appeal unanimously sided with the college in its right to sort of regulate its profession uh, in this way and discipline a member when necessary. The Supreme Court today, in declining to hear this case, has decided there were no issues of law that justified further arguments or further review in, in Canada's top courts. So this means this is the end of the legal road here. But what we watch to see now is if Peterson takes the course. Uh, he has said he will. He considers this ongoing pr prosecution uh, from his college. He believes he earned his license. He's entitled to keep it. And he said that if he does take the course, uh, he intends to broadcast it. Of course, for his followers and other sites that talk a lot about him and discuss this case, free speech, absolutists, and so on, um, freedom advocates, uh, that is an opportunity, perhaps, uh, for them to sort of amplify it further, create more new revenue streams from, from the clicks and the views that, that result from it. But that, of course, also puts the college in a very tight spot uh, when it has a mandate uh, to enforce professional uh, standards. Never easy to discipline a member in any case, let alone a very high profile one like this. Janice, uh, as you said, he's a high profile, uh, no longer really an academic. He's a public person, a, a celebrity, if you will. What have people, both his supporters and his detractors, been saying about this case? Well, on the one side, you have the perspective of the college and the Ontario College of Physicians and Surgeons also sort of holding this view that they do have a mandate to uphold the public interest. Um, the groups that brought uh, the, this, uh, these complaints in the first place were very pleased with the lower court decisions, which they felt did send a message that it is okay for the college to step in, uh, regulate um, and prevent uh, degrading or demeaning uh, speech that certainly affect uh, 
vulnerable groups. They think it's important that colleges take a stand against discrimination and prevent barriers uh, to, to accessing health care, which is the impression that could be created if they are somehow seen to be endorsing uh, views like this. Um, and, and the college has maintained that sort of they have to maintain high standards uh, that occasionally mean curtailing freedom of expression. But on the other side, you have civil liberties groups and people who believe that free speech is an absolute. And even without endorsing the specific posts, they have been alarmed about professional regulatory bodies stepping into police speech that isn't necessarily directly related to their professional practice, saying freedom of expression isn't something that you give up just because you join a, a, a regulated field. Janice, thank you so much for that. That's Janice McGregor in Ottawa.